Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be looking at this vintage Panasonic NVG12B video recorder. Uh, now despite having a G in its model number uh, this is one of the last ones that didn't use the awful G deck. Uh, now I say awful G deck, they were okay. Um, I did actually um, get quite good on them. Uh, but the problem is you couldn't just rebuild the deck, you had to put all brand new cogs in. Um, otherwise a few weeks later the cog would jump and you'd be back to square one. Uh, and Panasonic did produce a training tape. Um, and you know in the end I got really quite good at doing the G-Deck. But that was 40 odd years ago. Um, I had a load of G-Deck uh, repair kits and I sold them all off on eBay to get rid of them. Because I never thought I'd be using them again. But uh, anyway, luckily this isn't a G-Deck. Uh, now it's in remarkable cosmetic condition. Um, the customer says it hasn't been run for the last 20 years. Um, I'm not going to just rush out and try and find the service manual for it. Um, because that's going to be a big job. But um, the fault the customer's indicated has got wow and flutter, which usually means a mechanical fault, the pinch roller. Um, or something like that, or the, or the belt. Um, now I wouldn't be surprised if this needs a set of belts, but the problem with anything vintage is actually getting the parts for it. Um, now years ago in its heyday, you could buy a full service kit for this and they weren't expensive. It had the belts, uh, it had the pinch roller which came with an aluminium arm, cast aluminium, um, and new washers for the um, to put the bits and pieces on but I don't think I've got any of them left now um, so let's just take a quick look at the back first so that's the back of the machine just as clean as the top and the rest of it NVG 12B made in Germany uh, this predates SCART you've only got RF output but you do have uh, video in and out there so let's get the top off and have a quick look inside. Right, so that's it with the top off. Uh, it's pretty mint in there as well. Um, it's not full of dust like you would have expected. Um, this machine's been really, really well kept. Um, we'll just have a quick look here and then we'll take off the bottom and have a look underneath. Right, so that's the underneath view there. We've got a direct drive capstan motor. Uh, strangely enough, the belts seem all right. Um, if you look at the chassis there, we've got a die cast aluminium chassis. Um, these were one of the best uh, things ever produced. And then not long after they went to steel. And then years later, they went to bits of pressed steel that bent when you pushed on them. But this is all die cast machined aluminium. Um, so we've got uh, that's the loading belt there um, that doesn't feel too bad actually the loading belt which is very strange I would have assumed if this hadn't been run for 20 years the belts would be gone on it um, it's not to say they're slipping when we power it up but they feel okay so far right so let's move that's the mold switch there let's move back to the top now the customer says um, the complaint was wow and flutter so let's have a look at the pinch roller first right i'm gonna try and get some light in here uh, the first thing i can see is the pinch roller is absolutely gone uh, it's taken on a wet appearance like the rubber's degraded and it's it's absorbed moisture from the atmosphere there appears to be a chunk missing out of it uh, also on the caps and shaft there, there's a big accumulation of some sort of dirt, I'm not just sure what. You can see it there, but I'm struggling to get any light. Oh, you can see the pinch roller there, now that's, that's really, really well past its best. In fact, let's just give it a spin. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, it also sounds like the bearing's gone in it as well. Um, so that's probably what the fault is. 
um, where we're going to get one from I do not know because when you got it in the service kit it actually came with this if you can see that aluminium arm there it used to come with that um, so let's have a look oh look at that the uh, take up idler has also disintegrated now all of these bits are what used to come in the kit years ago uh, let's zoom in on that look at that that's, that's completely gone as well so as a minimum we're going to need a new idler and a new pinch roller so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera and I'll go and have a look through my few remaining video parts and see if I've got anything that looks like these well would you believe it look what I've just found uh, an original Panasonic service kit uh, the one I was just telling you about and it's the right one for this model so let's have a look what you've got the capstan belt the loading belt um, idler arm unit well we need that the pinch roller we need that tension band we need that and three washers to put them on um, now unfortunately the idler is already gone but the most important thing the pinch roller we've got that so what else is missing from there I don't think uh, I don't think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. What have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we only the idler missing. But that is a really good start. Because you'll not buy anything like this again. Right, so I'm looking through this box of video parts. I can't just see the part we want. Um, see, that's Panasonic. That's Panasonic. Um, there's some names here you'll remember. SEME. Um, JVC. CPC. Philips. See me again. I can't see um, a complete idler in here, but what I am finding is lots of um, tyres. So there is a possibility we might be able to just find the right size tyre to go on the old idler. See if it was a sharp, I'd have that part, but... Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take out the idler and then we'll see if we can replace just the tyre on it but I think first of all before we do any any more I'm just going to power this machine up and see what happens see if we can get it to play the uh, the blank um, service cassette first see if we can get some sort of life out of it before we start putting parts in uh, it's just another interesting thing here before we plug it in uh, it's fitted with an MK plug. Uh, these were considered the very, very best you could buy at one time. Uh, and look at that, it's still got a price on. Is it Perry's? No, it's Berries. Berries the name, and it says uh, 69 pence plus VAT. Right, so it's powered up. That's a good start. Uh, that's the on button there. Yeah, let's see if it'll run this test cassette now. Right, which is the play button. Yeah, we have take up. Let's try stop. That's the loading arms retracting back. Fast forward. Yeah, fast forward's not working, of course, because the idler's gone. Uh, let's try rewind. That's not working either. Um, 
and eject. Yeah, so that's a good start. It all seems to be mechanically all right. Um, so I guess what we need to do now is take out the video, uh, take out the front loading mechanism. Now I can't remember how that's done, uh, but these red screws here uh, usually indicate undo them to take something out. Um, and yeah, we've got red screws on the cassette housing so I think undo the four red screws under there and that should just lift out uh, but of course we need to take off the front panel first right so that's the front off um, get the camera in focus a little bit of dirt behind there so cleaning that off will brighten up uh, the display the vacuum fluorescent display let's take a quick look here Right, um, I'm going to undo the other red screws now and see if we can just lift this out. Right, now we've got a better view of the deck now. Uh, now we've got the carriage out. So I think the first thing we'll do is take that off and see if we can find another rubber tyre uh, for that. Right, let's do that first then. Right, so that's the idler out. You can see now how bad that really is. That is well past its best. So that should just pop off there like that. And we've got to look for one of them now. So, after a bit of searching, I've managed to find the exact right one. Well, that's a good start. Right, back to searching. I thought it was the right one, but it's about a millimetre too high. So, that's not the right one. I've got to look again. Right, so that's it. That's sorted that. i found one now. Right, actually we're in trouble here because if you look at that, I'll put the old one back on, that goes like that, but when I put the new one back on, it's actually slightly thicker so it catches on that post there. Uh, it's stuck there now you see. So that is not the right one either, I'm going to have to look again. Right, that's better. I managed to find the right one. It goes right in there now. Right, so that's that bit sorted. Next, onto the pinch roller. Right, now you can see how bad uh, the pinch roller is compared to the new one. See, it's kind of all shiny. Uh, but the strange thing is, under here, this bit here is actually scored. And it's not on the new one. Now, I find that very odd because it sits there on this plasticky type washer uh, that actually comes. It comes in this kit. So I don't know how that, that washer has scored the bottom of there. That's a mystery. But anyway, let's get the new one on. Oh, and... Um, I've got to clean that off the uh, caps and shaft as well first. Right, so that's the new pinch roller in place with the new um, circlip on the top and the new uh, plastic washer underneath that comes in the kit. Uh, I've put a little bit of um, height sol on the guides, uh, graphite grease, uh, just where they slide up and down. Uh, I'm going to put two belts on now. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the carriage in uh, and I'm going to try and I'm not going to fit the back tension band yet and, and there's a reason for that one I'm going to have to find the service manual to get the correct figure for the back tension um, and also I'm going to have to find where my back tension tape is um, so that's quite a big operation um, looking for the tape and the service manual so what we're going to do 
I'm just going to power it all up, make sure it works, and then we'll fit the new back tension band very last. So, underneath, just them two belts to go on now. Look at that, even though it worked and it loaded up, look at the difference in the belt because that's been sat in that position for the last 20 years and that's the new one. So, even though it was like that, it's still loaded up all right. And that's the uh, the old capstan belt there compared to the new one. Right, so I'm just going to give this um, behind the clock, behind the vacuum fastened display a little clean. Uh, and then we'll just pop the front on to make it easy to operate. And uh, also the infrared uh, sense where it comes in there, I'll do that as well. So I've just popped two screws in there because they hold the front of the carriage in as well and plug it in now see what happens right so there we go it's plugged in test cassettes in uh, let's try play first yeah the guys are locked in the V blocks we have take up uh, press start that's winding the cassette back in, so that's okay. Fast forward. Yeah, that's working. Stop, rewind. That's working, yeah. So, I think it's safe now to uh, connect a telly to this and uh, put a tape in. Let's just take the, the uh, task cassette out. Um, and for them who haven't noticed, the um, cassette end sensor is actually infrared. It's not a incandescent bulb like they had in the early ones right let's get it connected up to the tally now um actually to connect it to that tally i'll have to pull it all out and get an aerial lead into the back because i've only got this set up for av uh, so what i'll do is i'll just pull out the trusty fidelity zx 2000 chassis tally and we'll try it on that right so here we go that's the fidelity zx 2000 just switch on the back there Test signal on. Let's get a tally on. Uh, number one. Yeah, now we haven't got the AFC door there the door's broke on this tally but uh, we can just about that's probably about right let's turn that off there yep right I'll go and get a tape now right here we go Pikachu Pokemon that should do And it's already gone into play. Ah, now there's another problem. It's either the end of the tape or we have no picture. Possibly because the head's dirty. So I think I'll just rewind this first. Right, so it turns out that the tape is at the uh, end. Well, not at the end, but where there's no film. Um, but we have a problem. I've tried another tape. So we press play on this one. And that is a black and white film, by the way, so don't worry about that. Uh, but we do have a problem. If we press stop and then rewind, let's see what happens. So it won't rewind. And it won't fast forward either. Uh, and I've tried that on a couple of tapes now, so it's not with the tape, it's with the machine. Um, so we're going to have to take take the carriage out and have another look. Right, so I've had a quick look and it would appear that when it's in fast forward or rewind, uh, the other side, the brake's on. Um, and it doesn't turn, let's just fast forward it. 
see that's turning but that oh that's working now now before the brake was on that I wonder if it's the mode switch that's dirty because the brake's not on now let's try the other side rewind no that's all right now it's probably the mold switch that wants cleaning yeah if you look at that it just started working again on its own fast forward so um, I'm going to have a look I don't think I've got a brand new mold switch if I have a fit one if not we're just going to have to clean it right so unfortunately i can't find a new mode switch so i've had to clean the old one which is working fine now uh, so we've got one last job to complete this repair and that is the back tension band um, now i have got the service manual for this somewhere um, i've had a really quick look but i'm not going to spend any time because this is a major operation so let's just turn around under this bench here let's lift this up you can see under here all these are service manuals now the panasonic one is here somewhere and another thing is all these manuals are actually two layers deep there's another load of manuals at the back so I'm not going to pull all this great lot out uh, and spend all day looking for just one service manual. So I've just typed the number in on the internet and the model number NVG12, I've actually got the service manual for that now, I've found a free copy on the internet but it doesn't give any mechanical setting up and it refers you to another service manual called the Panasonic D1 deck. Uh, which is apparently what this is fitted with Right, so I found this useful article written by Nick Beer in May 1990 on the Panasonic D1 deck uh, And that actually gives you the back tension torque figure uh, Which is specified there as 25 to 30 grams maximum So before we do anything, let's just take uh, a reading of the back tension as it is now before we put the new band in right so there we go back tension gauge uh, let's have a look here play so it's slightly high at about 38 grams a centimeter bound touching on 40 so we'll have to uh, put the new band in and adjust it to the correct figure Right, so there we go, that's the new back tension band in. As you would imagine, the felt's fallen off the other one when we took it out. Um, it is a little bit dirty. Um, I've lined it up already. I'll just uh, show you the back tension gauge now. The only thing, this is incredibly difficult to see because it says um, for best performance, set it to 30 grams a centimetre. Well, the 30 mark is under there where you can't see the gauge the marker but I can just about there we just got it on 30 grams a centimeter right so that's it the job's done let's just wrap up the video by uh, playing a little bit of this tape it's the promotional tape uh, for the Mullard 45AX tube uh, Right, it's not at the beginning, but it won't matter about that. Oh, it's already playing. There we go. Let's get the volume up a bit. To control deviation of the electron beams exactly, even into the far corners of the screen. Every aspect of design and manufacture combined perfectly. The three main elements of mask, Electron gun and coil work in perfect synergy. Just try the pause on it. Screen. Yeah, not too bad. That black band's coming from the camera. The result superb image quality and a sleek, attractive design. Now viewers can read teletext right into the corners with no image loss. More people can view since the viewing angle is increased. 
and as light reflections are reduced by a flatter surface, viewing quality is much improved. The 45AX flatter squarer screen has caused quite a stir. State-of-the-art television has arrived. Right. Turn it down. I think we'll stop it there. So, everybody, that's it. The Panasonic NVG... Oh, I can't remember what it was now. NVG 12 video. Um, I'm not just sure of the age, but it's... Um, I don't know, is it early 90s? I can't remember. I'll let somebody else figure that out. All right, guys and girls on YouTube, many thanks for watching my video, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one then. Goodbye.